I made thousands and thousands of cold calls as a recruiter and a sales dude 30 years ago. Thought there'd be an easier way. Started meeting other professionals, finding out what made them successful without cold calling. The ones that were really successful were meeting other professionals who already had their client and teaching them how to send them referrals. And for the last 21 years, I've been studying that. I've had over 7,000 coffee meetings and I've talked to a lot of people and put together a system. So I don't have to cold call or door knock or spend money on leads. There we go. Wow, you just hooked every agent ever right now with what you just said. It's very relationship focused, but I feel like that's a cliche word that is horribly, horribly misused. Oh, you're in the relationship business. They don't say if it's an abusive relationship because for some people it is, is that this is about going and finding a mutual, benef mutually beneficial relationship with someone in or adjacent to the real estate space. Tell me a little bit about, uh, real quick, just a little bit about your history of, of building this Legion strategy. What do you call it, by the way? Uh, the, the easiest way to explain is it, it building ref a referral-based practice, or we call it referral networking. Not referral marketing, but referral networking. Referral networking. Okay, yeah. I like that. I like that. Two good words. Okay, so you call it referral networking. And how did you kind of discover this strategy? How long of an answer do you want? Short, because we're going to okay. get into some deep stuff, and I know you've sure, got more sure. to share. Uh, I made thousands and thousands of cold calls as a recruiter and a sales dude 30 years ago. Thought there'd be an easier way. Started meeting other professionals, finding out what made them successful without cold calling. Mm -hmm. And the ones that were really successful were meeting other professionals who already had their client and teaching them how to send them referrals. And for the last 21 years, I've been studying that. I've had over 7,000 coffee meetings and I've talked to a lot of people and put together a system. So, so I don't have to cold call or door knock or spend money on leads. There we go. Wow, you just hooked every agent ever uh, right now with what you just said. Uh, <laughs> so one, one thing that, from what I understand about your strategy, you know, with some of the material and the things we've discussed is that it's very relationship focused, but, I feel like that's a cliche word that is horribly, horribly misused. Oh, you're in the relationship business, but they don't say if it's an abusive relationship because for some people it is. What I like about what I understand, and then I'm gonna let you explain further, yeah. is that this is about going and finding a mutual, benef mutually beneficial relationship with someone in or adjacent to the real estate space. Right. Who basically, you can benefit from what their clientele is and they can benefit from what your clientele is. It's yes. relevant. It's not weird and gimmicky. Like when someone's like, well, go sell the protein powders in addition to real estate. Cause you're always talking to people, but that's not, that has nothing to do with what they're doing in real estate. And so it's yeah. actually a, a conflict. It's a tension driver. But what yeah. you're doing is you're going to vendors and you're saying this is complimentary right so why don't you kind of break that down you sure. just explain first who do you go after to get these yep. referrals what type of people are okay. <clears throat> robert couple questions to, to kind of set up a baseline here let's do it through our next hour or two hours are we talking about any agent or new agents five years less than five years more than five years can you give me a little profile of what because my answer will be different yes yes no that's great I would say that it, let, let's make the target audience an agent right now who knows how to generate leads, okay? They know paid lead gens, they know how to get Zillow, they know how to get referrals from, from maybe other agents or ask their clients, but they're just frustrated and they're wanting to get referrals from people who are, they're, they're partners who are benefiting off their transactions. Sure. So they and could be new, they could be senior, could be a team leader. Okay, so it could be any any length of experience. Right, but they do okay. understand what leads are, what lead generation is, okay. right? So we're not explaining to them those basics. We have other videos good. for that. <laughs> yeah, good, because I don't I don't work with leads ever. Right. I only work with referrals. So I don't I don't even have a lead conversation. Perfect. So Perfect. the 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 term Robert is called uh, power partner. Power partner. So when I'm in these real estate groups, you know, I have a hundred and 90,000 agents in there. I can't get leads. I can't get leads. My friends, I'm moving to a new area. I don't know anybody. I say, good. 
don't talk to your sphere. So I, I don't recommend people talk to, this is me and I fly in the face of a lot of people. Let's go. Um, I don't think you should talk to your SOI, um, your friends, your family members, because, or, or, or you go to, you join a church group or an association. Everybody knows you're a realtor and here comes the real noise. He's going to try to sell me another home. So <clears throat> people go, I don't know anybody. I'm new. I don't know how to get leads. I go, don't work with leads. Work with people who already have your client and teach them how to send you referrals. So it's called power partnering. So Robert, the 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 list is too long to give you the whole list. My wife can name 163 different industries. Let me give you the definition and then give you some ideas. Okay. Because <clears throat> you said we're going to go deeper later. I don't want to go super deep right, right now. For right. we'll start with like your top five favorites after you explain Perfect. the so definition. The, the definition definition of a power partner is a professional who calls on, sells to, and serves the exact same people you do, but they don't do what you do. Mm, powerful. So That's good. if this is me and I'm a real estate agent, then I ask myself, who has my client? Mm. But now when we go really deep, I got to go first time home buyer inheritance. Are they getting married, divorced? Because then, then we're going to go deep on strategies there. Right. But a real estate agent, the, the first seven figure earner I ever met with, she opened up a brochure. And it was folded over. And she goes, Rick, I put someone in a home. They moved to this area. It's my responsibility to provide them their gardener, their roofer, their painter, the best restaurants, their next dentist, their next hairstylist. Mm. But but top five, if we just want to be generalized, yes. real estate agent. Most likely an agent's going to work with. Financial planner, mortgage lender, insurance agent. CPAs, estate planning attorneys, okay, and about 150 more. That's a that's a that's the common list that you ask every agent. That's what they're going to say. And I, all right, say one more time for me. Go I want to repeat them back. Yeah. So say 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 the five for me one more time, and I'm going to follow with you. I could do like a hundred. That's the that's the problem. Let's do, but let's the, do five. I want to I want to ingrain property casualty insurance agent. Property casualty insurance is that just straight up property insurance? Yeah. Like homeowners insurance, insurance. Somebody's gotta somebody's gotta have insurance. Okay. Homeowners insurance. <clears throat> Mortgage lender. Mortgage lender. Financial planner. Financial planner. So now the core is real estate mortgage, financial planner, insurance, estate planning attorney. Estate planning attorney, insurance. Okay. And, okay. and then from there I'm gonna get into And know, of it, course, it, there's tons more truly that you can do far beyond that because I mean through the process of owning a home, yeah, you will have an unbelievable amount of people that professionals that will come in yeah. through your home ownership journey that will serve you and they are serving your clients. Yeah. Um, okay. And I'll, I'll, go ahead. Robert, as we go, cause we have a lot of time together. Um, I'll take a couple of the strategies and I'll go like super deep. We're, we're just kind of just setting the baseline right, right. now. Understanding the high level. <laughs> and then we're going to pick a couple ways to go deep. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I love this. So now, how do you meet these people? We'll get into what you actually do, but just how do I go find my, uh, everybody knows how to find a mortgage lender. That's easy. We'll get into how to talk to them in a minute, but how do I find an estate planner? How do I find these people? Sure. Um, how many answers do you want? Uh, most likely that an agent would, would be able to take action on. Okay. Uh, in your local area, pretty much every city in America within 20 miles of where you're sitting has a Chamber of Commerce. Mm. Go to Chamber of Commerce website, go to all members and click on attorneys and look for estate planning attorneys. That's one. Wow, that was easy. <clears throat> Another exactly one is yeah. go to Google, type in any city in America, go to Google Maps. Robert, I'm telling you something that I've never recorded I've never told anybody this is this is the inside secret secret stuff. Wow. Oh yeah. yeah. I've never put on recorder I'm about to tell you and it sounds like common sense but nobody knows how to nobody does it. Okay. Any city in America open up Google Maps. Like I'm stunned I'm giving this. <clears throat> Go to Google Maps and then the, where, type in what what city are you in? Murfreesboro. Murfreesboro, Tennessee. <laughs> I'm Murfreesboro, Tennessee. I've been there. Uh to the bean pot. <laughs> Um, uh, and you type in Murfreesboro and you type in a state planning attorney and 
there's going to become a list on the left hand side of every estate planning attorney. Now, if you take that map, Robert, and you start to open it up, the more you open it up, the longer that list gets. Mm. And you'll find 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 500 financial planners. I don't know, 5, 10, 15, 20 estate planning attorneys with a link to their website. And then I want to get too, too into it, but you click on the website, you go to the website and I have secret ways to get the owner of the company's email address and contact information. And then, then I craft a very specific email to hook them to get on the want to meet with yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's awesome. That's awesome. And I Google know- Map and Chambers of Commerce. Yeah, I was just going to say, and it seems like those may be pretty useful for some of the other ones as well. For right. everything. So now I think we overall we've established, okay, uh, Power Partners. And it's referral only, and it's people who are serving your clients, but n- do not do what you do. And they send you the agent referrals. Pretty simple. I think we've established that. There's yeah, it sounds simple, but yes, that well, is. Sim- found- I meant simple to understand. Simple to understand. Yes. You're hearing it, and the words make sense. Yeah. Right? Obviously, there's a finesse to everything. I could be like online lead gen. It's so easy. I go and get leads online, and it's like. But the vast majority of agents suck at it. Yeah. They still don't close deals from it. There is a process. Yeah. And it's it's it's, it's, yeah. it's to teach the whole networking system between like the course and the one-on-one coaching is about 14 to 16 hours. Because a lot of people think that but this is But then that sets you up. Hey, Robert, uh, I'm a real estate agent. You know, when you look at a buyer sell a home in the next 60 to 90 days, people go, I go, net- I network everywhere. I'm constantly handing out my card. When you hand out a card and you talk about yourself, you're marketing, you're not networking. Yeah. So 99% of people who think they're networking have never networked in their life. They're yeah. just handing out cards. I That's couldn't not agree more, by the way. Oh my gosh. But we'll go, I, I will go on a tangent on that. So we'll skip it. Okay. So I think we've s- established the high level. And for those listening, now you know whether this fits you or not. This is not a program where you go and you pay to get leads sent to your CRM or some other CRM. This is not about having an ISA team. There's strategies and stuff for that. If that's what you're looking for, we have other videos. This is for those who want referrals directly from the people who are servicing your clients, but don't do what you do. Correct. Awesome. Robert, could I throw a couple things out there just to kind of throw them? Back up just for one second. I should have a mint. Uh, That'd be fun. Can I? Can, yeah. <laughs> so, the way I always say it is, I help people build a referral based practice so they don't have to cold call or door knock. Mm. Okay. What I want to do is I want to back up real quick and let everyone know that as of last week, I've been teaching this for 21 years. My wife is a real estate agent. I've been with her for 13 years. She helps people invest in land. We've closed six deals since the last time I talked to you. So about 130, 100, no wait, 1,030 closed real estate transactions without ever cold calling, door knock, or paying a dime for a lead. I've had over 7,000 coffee meetings. My wife has had over 4,000 coffee meetings. I've been teaching what we're talking about today as of last week for 21 years. I just kind of wanted to throw it out there. I'm not just some guy. I know. 21 years, 7,000 coffee. with that even? Because that's a powerful, powerful, I mean, <clears throat> uh, I told an agency the other day, I said, you know, you get misled a lot into believing that it's all about being friendly. You know, like you'll hear people um, go, oh, you're so friendly. You should be a real estate agent. Oh, why are you a real estate agent? Oh, I'm good with people. Okay. At the end of the day, our business is a performance-based business. We either deliver on results and get paid for it, or we don't deliver on results and we don't get paid. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we lose money. We lose time. So, okay, I think we've established a good high level now. I think yep, now I'm people listening know what we're going to talk about and whether it's for them or not. Yeah. So now let's pick a kind of a pathway, a journey. And I want to pick one from a, an agent perspective. And guys, just so you know, I did a minimal amount of research with Rick because I wanted, and it was his idea, actually, and I love this, and I'm going to start implementing this, is that we get to know each other. But I did not ask him about all the details of his strategy because I wanted to come with this from a very fresh mind as, as a, almost a viewer and a host at the same time. So my questions are raw, guys. They're real. And I'm going to walk this journey with you, with Rick being our guide. So, Rick, I'm going to take something that the average agent is going to immediately connect to. I know right off the bat. They're going to say mortgage lender. Mm-hmm. My mortgage lender should be sending me referrals. 
So let's walk through the process of what that looks like. And I have some questions asked that are popping in my head. So first is, um, do you think, in genu genuine question, do you think the average agent, meaning they sell three to four homes a year, is in a position to go to their mortgage lender and use this strategy? You want the answer now or are you going to hit me with other questions? No, answer now, that one. I want to know. Right <laughs> Does that person do any form of networking? No. Like you said, the average agent... Or, or are you saying the lender? The, the the agent who does three or four deals a year. No, if they did, they'd okay. probably be closing more deals. Yeah. So uh, if they're not putting in any work to build a network, then they're not going to have a lot to provide that mortgage lender. So the answer is could be challenging. Okay. I could go very deep on how that agent could get in with the mortgage lender, but they need to be networking. So Here's here's a here's an example. If I'm a real estate agent, I go, I don't want to approach mortgage lenders because they're already getting approached by 500 other agents. Mm -hmm. Those 500 other agents are contacting them to get referrals mm -hmm. or to get leads, whatever it is. Whatever it is, yeah. <clears throat> I Even if I was doing three or four deals a year, I could put myself on the top like that. I'm going to tell you how. So, okay, let, let me answer your question. Let me yes, get, yes, let me yes, yes, yes. Uh, the, if I'm a real estate agent, I want to get in with a mortgage lender. Okay. The mortgage lender either wants loans because they got to make money or I start introducing, this is very highly advanced. It's about an hour ahead of where we should be right now, but they should be introducing their network to their network. So if I meet a financial planner, when I get back from the meeting, I'm going to introduce him to a CPA. When I meet a banker, I'm going to introduce him to a business coach. If I meet a mortgage lender, I'm going to introduce the mortgage lender, uh, financial planner, CPA, state planning attorney. I'm going to help that mortgage lender build their network by introducing my network to him. That immediately puts me on the top because then I'm not there just going like this. Um, where's the loan? Where's because the that breaks the law of reciprocity. If you have a coffee meeting and the sole reason for that is to get a listing or sell a home, you broke the law of reciprocity, which says give with no thought of return. It's exactly why I stopped right away, even as a new agent meeting with lenders who wanted to take me to lunch. I realized that they were there. They didn't yeah. even know me. They yeah. weren't interested in knowing me. They <clears> never <throat> even asked questions about me, by the way, at any yeah. of the lunches I went to. It was basically just saying, hey, Rick, thanks for meeting me. Um, here's a hamburger. And right. by the way, my company's great. We do all this stuff. I yep. know it's lows on time, yep. blah, 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 blah. And yep. so what you're basically saying is don't be that guy. Don't go yeah. so, and be that guy. <clears throat> so what I'm saying is I have a, a whole system set up. When I meet somebody for coffee, if it's a one hour meeting, I get them to talk for 30 to 40 minutes. Mm. And then... When I find out all everything I need, I do something called a pre-frame, Robert. So I find out who you are, what you do, kids, everything, uh, what kind of clients you like to work with. And then I'm in my mind, I'm going, who could I introduce this person to? Who could I introduce this person You're to? And me getting a, a deal. Yeah. Yeah. Providing value beyond because every agent says, I do this and this and this. Every mortgage lender says, rate, rate, rate. No one cares. Yeah. No one cares. I could get rate anywhere. That's right. There's other things that are more important, like showing you care about me by asking specific questions and taking notes. There's a lot of little intricate things when you meet somebody. Robert, if you were at a networking event, which I know you've been to a million, <laughs> when I take someone's card, the first thing I do, I go, Robert, what do you do? Hey, Robert, before you tell me, could I have your card? I take your card and I go like this. I look at your card and I turn it over and I go, I go like this. So what do you do? And I'm actually taking notes. I've had people that are just standing there. And as soon as I grab the card, they go, well, and they get really serious. Right. Cause this guy, this guy's serious. Right. He genuinely, so, uh, again, if anybody listening, how to win yeah. friends and influence people, he's yeah. genuinely taking an interest in something that I care about. Yes. Which therefore makes me care more about him. Yeah. I get, I get people to business wise, fall in love with me by asking them questions people love to talk about themselves and you can and for everyone listening uh, apply exactly what he's talking about to your clients so you build these referral partners okay. and then they send you a referral treat them with that same level of care and interest yeah you will see that they have this 
care and this this appreciation and loyalty to you that you you're going to be baffled by yeah and robert here's an example of showing you care beyond being an just an agent <clears throat> um if someone's buying a home it's it, instead of just like doing surface things if they need a carpet cleaner a painter a handyman a gardener a roofer uh, they inherited some money financial planner somebody somebody died estate planning attorney life insurance when you're providing all of these services you're servicing your client besides just your commission and then you're bringing in the carpet cleaner the handyman the roofer which will go deep on strategies but you're starting to please your power partners so you got your referral yeah. partners on one side getting pleased you're pleasing your client on the other side and that seven figure earner her name's tammy she said if i bring in for sellers uh, she had a carpet cleaner i think she brought the guy in for like 300 carpet cleaning jobs and she never got a, a, a referral from him but she didn't care because if she was bringing all these tradesmen in to help the house to get it to sell she's right. pleasing the client mm -hmm. number the client one then goes, in that moment i don't use a yellow page i come my real estate agent she knows everyone why would i what why would i She's already had, she already knows them. She's worked with them. If I need a handyman, I just call my agent. Let me call your agent. Then all of a sudden, you're, you're, that's how you get your clients. Your clients aren't going to go, hey, call my agent because my agent only charged me 2.13725. No, my agent knows everybody. I did nothing. I walked in the house, the painter, the roofer, the handyman, she brought them all in for me. You know what that's I love about you what you're saying too is that like I've, I've always believed in this principle. It's part of why I was so excited to get on and do this call. I've always believed in this principle in general. If I can, I will. That's just always been something that I do in life. And there's always within reason, but a great example is my CPA. My CPA is a very, very, like if you were to take top CPAs in the world, like he's up there and, and it's, that's a guys, just so you know, that's a very prestigious place to be. There's not many CPAs who get invited to talk on a stage. Okay. With with mm -hmm. Ed Milet and things like that. All right, so he's phenomenal. I never received a referral from him. Okay, for for the, for the beginning of our relationship, despite that I was giving him my business. Now, at first, my entitlement kicked in, yeah. and I said, "I'm owed this because I'm special." <sighs> Instead, I settled down. One and it's day, an ego blow. I got it. It's an ego blow. Yep. I, I just asked him, I said, listen, what can I do to make you want to use me as a real estate agent? And here, this is very important for guys for listening. Okay. It's very, very important. He, he did give me some stuff, but the reality is, is what he really said was, I just have a pre-established relationship that I trust and I don't want to break that system, which guess what? Nobody likes change. Uh, it's scary. It's a lot of work and there's risk. So you know what I did, Rick, and you, you, you know, because this is what we talked about. I brought him lots of clients. I really did. And then I mm -hmm. connected him to potential people. And in fact, I listened when he would talk to me about people that he was like, yeah, I've been trying to get that agent forever, but I can't. And I was like, in my head, I go, I know that agent. And then all of a sudden I'm introducing him to the person he's been trying to get but couldn't yep. get <clears throat> mm -hmm. and here's what's crazy happened right and this happened recently by the way about two or three months ago i'm talking to him and he said by the way the next time that we buy and uh, buy investments and things like that i want to use you mm -hmm. and part of that was because i asked him i said what changed and he said my current agent isn't trying to build my business yeah and you have sent me so many clients mm -hmm. you don't ask for anything in return and on top of that you are always teaching me about real estate objectively meaning i'm always knowledgeable and able so i'm building the trust that i am an actual expert which reduces his fear of will i get equal or better results from yeah. robert and then I've already paid forward anything that I'll get from him. I've already paid for it by what I've already given. Yep. 
that was crazy. That was a crazy thing. And I was like, whoa. Good. And then it, and now it yep. makes me think of what you're talking about, like this, yep. this attitude. Okay. Yeah, it's a whole – it's just systematized. That's all. So this is, a, this is amazing. But I think one thing we need to clarify because you said it a couple times is most agents have not networked ever in their life. And I would agree with you on that, by the way. No, I, no, I'm oh, sorry. No, no, I'm saying those people who have done three or four deals a year, do they network? And you said no. Oh, uh, my, my bad. Yes. Let's, let's correct. I, I'm hoping they, I'm, I, I, I'm hoping they're out there networking. I, I just want to clarify that I didn't say that. I just yeah, say, no, 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 you're good. You're good. I'm imperfect. And absolutely. I'm very glad that you did correct. So, uh, in context of the target audience, you know, agents yeah. doing three, four deals a year. Um, what, what is networking for an agent who's doing three to four deals a year? Let's like explain because they're going to, they heard you say that, mm -hmm. right? But then it's like, okay, but then what is networking? So when we first started, <clears throat> uh, so we're, we're, we're specifically talking about right now people, because you had said, I, when I asked you what who we're targeting, you said it doesn't matter the years. It matters how many referrals are coming in. So right now we're specifically talking about people who are doing three or four a year. Yes, specific. or someone who's just not networking. Same, same okay. difference. Someone who does right. not know what networking is. They've right. gone and handed their business card and never saw any results, right? That type of person. What is networking? Whew, wow. I know, right? That, Boom, what the heck? That's a 13-hour 13, 13 answer. So <laughs> in let, a nutshell. Can, I think I think what I'd like to do, if you don't mind, is give you the components. I like this. Okay, let's break it okay. down. So let's well, let's do this first. Let's talk about the difference between a lead and a referral. I can't even go into networking without talking about the difference between a lead and a referral. Okay. A lead is something that's not qualified. A lead comes from paper or the internet. So any form of marketing is for leads. Marketing's for two things, to build credibility and to get leads. Okay, a referral, so anybody out there who's run an ad and somebody calls them on the phone and says, hey, I saw your ad, that's a lead. Okay, or a, a referral is this. <clears throat> Robert, uh, as an example, uh, I'm sitting with my financial planner and I say, you know, I'm, I've been renting and I'm not sure if it's a good time to buy. And the financial planner opens up the drawer, pulls out the real estate agent's card and says, I don't know. I'm not an expert in that. Call this person and hands them the card. That's closer to a referral. Mm -hmm. I'd call that a warm referral. A real referral is this. Financial planner sitting with his client. The client says, I think I want to buy an investment property. He opens up the drawer, pulls out Robert's card. And then says, tell me a little bit more about that. Well, I have this bonus check and I have this going on. I have that going on. And I, I watched this TV show and I'm looking in this area. And then that financial planner, Robert, because you, Robert, taught the financial planner how to pre-screen for your referrals. Oh, interesting. That financial planner answers five or 10 questions for Robert. Their name, are they married? Do they have kids? Uh, First time home buyer, investor, what did they say to you? What was your response? Why do you think I should talk to them? And then when you get that, Robert, when the financial advisor tells Janice, you got to call Robert if you want to buy a home. And then that financial planner sends Robert an email. My client Janice is going to be calling you. Here's some information about her. Robert, if she's married and she has a, has a, she's pregnant, and has a four-year-old, your mind starts going, maybe they want to upsize. Mm -hmm. They're 65 years old. Their, their, their final kid just moved out. Downsize. So my, my mind starts to work on how I'm going to serve this person. Yes. A referral is qualified from a trusted advisor, not from freaking Facebook. Interesting. But I'm going to give you one sense. more example. I'm going to give you another example. Yeah. And I want to go deeper on this before we go. Okay, let's do it. Because I'm coaching three women right now around the country. They all like working with uh, uh, married people getting married because then that's first time home buyer. Yeah. Robert, the number one person, the first two people, other than family, forget family. We don't talk to family about real estate because they get annoyed. Yeah, they do. So the first two people who are going to know when someone's getting married, 
the person who sold the jewelry, the ring dude. Yeah. And on the women's side, it's generally the makeup, the hairstylist, the fitness trainer, the massage therapist, the wedding dress people. So if if the hairstylist is the hairstylists and bartenders know more than any human being on the planet about about their clientele. They're sitting there for an hour. Just talking about anything. So if somebody goes, My husband's cheating on me, I'm gonna leave him. Well, there's an opportunity to sell a house. So we're we're gonna be getting married. How exciting. If that hairstyle is so smart, the hairstyle would say things like, do you need a photographer? Do you need a wedding planner? Are you guys thinking about buying a home? I got a great real estate agent. If the hairstylist gives their client sitting there, again, Robert's real estate card and says, Robert's a, Robert knows everybody. The guy's amazing. You should call him when you guys are ready to buy. And that person calls you. They were referred by their trusted advisor. Now, I hairstylist, Robert. When somebody's getting married and they got to get the updo, a hairstylist is absolutely a trusted advisor. Absolutely. So, and I could go very deep. I could spend three hours just on how to strategize on networking with people in the wedding planning business to get first time home buyers when they get. So, but there's an example. Networking is meeting at networking events or, or, or finding them and emailing them and having coffee meetings with them. Yeah. You find out what they're looking for to build their business, their financial planner. I guarantee you they want to meet bankers and they want to meet uh, uh, insurance agents. Yeah. And you talk to them, you find out what they're looking for to build their business. And then the last 15 minutes after you've got them to talk and expel everything and fall in love with you, then you hit them with very specific scripts to fire the reticular activating system and the brainstem so they think of you. So with that, I want to give you quickly the components of, of what a referral network even is. Uh, there we go. Let's go. Let's break it down. Number one thing I do is I ask a real estate agent, tell me why you got in the business. If they got into real estate and in the first five minutes of them speaking, Robert, is because it's a good way to make money. Because you can't go up to a financial planner. Go, hey, Mr. Financial Planner, I, I'd love for you to send me your clients so I can sell them a home because I got in the business to make money. Hey, Mr. Klein, I need you to buy or sell a home because I need to make money. That's a given. So the number one oh, thing is, yeah. <laughs> it's number one is called epiphany story. Why did you get into real estate? And there's millions of reasons. I met, met a lady. My husband was in corporate. I moved 15 times. Every agent I worked with sucked. I thought I could do a better job, so I became a real estate agent. Nothing in there was about how much money she makes. Yeah. Um, so number one, you have got to build, which I help people do this. It's you're building a whole story with pictures and everything. So when you meet people, you have the slides. Mm -hmm. Like I lived in, I got divorced in 08, homeless. I slept on a futon and then I met my wife and we've traveled the world. I have pictures of all these different things. So you, you take people on this emotional roller coaster of why you got into real estate. That's number one. Number two, you have to have an avatar. That's your perfect client. Now, you might have to have 30 of them, Robert, because you look like you're, how old, 25, 28, 30? I don't know. You're, 33. You might be 30. Oh, Jesus. That's because of the hat. So, Robert, first time home buyers in their 20s, uh, empty nesters, we, we got to have an avatar for each client. You need to know more about your clients than they know about themselves. Mm, so, that's that. avatar. And then we have to follow six laws, which I'm not going into detail on, but one of them is the law of reciprocity, give with no thought of return. It's the, I'm looking at my clock and I'm your client. How come you haven't sent me any referrals? I've sent you three referrals. How come you haven't sent me any? Then you're not giving with no thought of return. You're waiting for return. So you broke the law of reciprocity. You can't build a referral network if you're waiting for people to send you stuff. Right. Number four, you have your personal story. You know who your perfect client is. Craft an elevator pitch. Robert, there's not a human being on the planet who knows more about the elevator pitch than me. I facilitated 1,500 networking groups, 7,000 coffee meetings, 5,000 hours on one topic elevator pitch. You got to have a good elevator pitch. Then you have your personal story and you have your elevator pitch. So now we have something to meet with a mortgage lender or a financial planner to talk about. When it's our turn to speak, we're going to tell our personal story of why we got the business. We're going to program their mind for what kind of referrals we're looking for. But what we need to do, Robert, is we need to have a list of hundreds of people to meet with. So step one in the power partner list, 
power partner is somebody who calls on, serves, sells to, and consults the same people you do. They just don't sell what you sell. Yeah. And we want to start coming with a list. Handyman, roofer, painter, financial planner, CPA. Uh, Robert, uh, one that's like secret, secret that I that I held back for 15 years. There, every school in the country in the summer has someone at the school who takes calls. I'm moving to the area. I have some questions about your school. Oh, wow. I move, did you hear what I said? I'm moving to the area. Yes. Hello. Find that person at that school and bring them bagels, bring them donuts, do whatever you got to do. Bring a stack of your business cards and go, hey, when you get a call and people want to know about the best neighborhoods, I, I will... I'll give you any class you want. I'll teach you anything you want about real estate, but could you please? And that's a whole scripted out thing. And then you always show your card. And Robert, that's why you, I believe you should have a picture. And I'm holding up podcasters out there. I'm holding up a picture. is because when I program their mind and I say, hey, Robert, if somebody calls saying we're moving to the area, we'd like to learn about a little about the area, think of me. And I'm programming their mind with my picture so they think of this guy. And I, I've met oh, I people who have done that. And it made a half a million a year just network with, with teachers and consultants at school yeah. that work with families moving in. That's a big, I didn't give that one away for like 15 years. Dang, that's crazy. That's a, that, but yeah. that makes complete sense, right? It's, it's understanding again, who are your clients going to, who are your yeah. future clients that's going it. to already? If um, they want to move to Murfreesboro and they have kids, that's why we want to know how old their kids are. Yeah. And if we they also have know kids, if you look up the list of least trusted professionals, in America, real estate agents are up there with lawyers and other yeah. stuff. So what that yeah. also tells you is that they're the last person some people are going to want to talk because yeah. because nobody wants to go talk to the person they don't trust. Right. They're like, that's my last resort. When I feel that right. I'm equipped, I'm armed, I got my armor on, and I'm ready, now I'll go talk to those people. But I would argue that if they're not on the list, they're probably going to be some of the best <laughs> referral partners you could ask for because they're some of the most trusted yep. people that are going to get the first call. Yeah. That person, that school. I mean, if you've got kids, yeah, you have all this other crap going on in life, but you got to get your kids into school. Not only yep. legally do you have to deal with that, but emotionally, you generally, if they already go into school, your life is built around the fact they're yep. gone. Yeah. So they're going to be calling that person that you just yeah. said as quickly as they can. Yeah. So yeah, can, can wow. I throw one thing in there real quick? So there's something called a trust bridge. So when I teach it, I have a road and a road, but there's no, there's no bridge. So you, you, you were talking about how kind of, I don't trust the sales guy, right? That's a used car salesman thing too. I don't want to talk to the sales guy, but if, if the, if the, the hairdresser, said you and your husband think about buying a home you have to call you have to call robert so what what this is robert is in my in my left hand is robert in my right hand is uh the hairdresser mm -hmm. what the hairdresser did is they built what's called a trust bridge they said he's a great person i know him yeah. i've had coffee with him and then it that that hairdresser is paving the road for that person doesn't trust you to have the faith to drive across the bridge and meet with Robert. So if we have trusted advisors, like Robert, my sister won't take advice from me because I'm her little brother, but people all over the world take my advice, but my freaking, yeah. I went from homeless and awake to multi, multi-millionaire and my sister won't listen to a word I say, but people all over the world will. So yeah. that's why I don't talk to my friends and family. I don't, yeah. There is an inherent the, bias that exists. Yeah. 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 yeah they you. knew you when you're a stout nosed kid. So, but if you meet with other professors, already have that person as a client. Yeah. I, I've met people, Robert, that, 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 that painter came in and the painter was in the house and they go, I don't, I'm going to fix this wall. We're going to do this. We're actually going to maybe blow that wall out because when we're all done, we're going to sell the home. I've taught many agents to, to have coffee meetings with painters. Same thing, hold the car up and go, the card up and say, hey, Mr. Painter, if you walk in a home and the homeowner says, I'm going to paint this, do this because we're getting the house ready to sell, do me a favor. 
run. Don't walk. Run to your car. Keep my cards in your glove box. Yeah. If they say we're thinking of selling, please hand them the card. Now, Robert, we got to go somewhere with this. Yes, I was just going to say. I have earned the right to ask the painter to do this for me. If they say they're looking to sell a home after you paint their house, please give them my card. But I've earned the right two ways. Number one, I've had coffee with them. Yep. Bottom coffee. And number two, I have sent that painter, carpet cleaner, flooring company, handyman, general contractor, every kind of trade I could think of. I've given him introductions to help him build his business. So then down the road, after I've just the same thing you did, Robert, I'm introducing to other professionals that earns me the right, earns me the right to say, dude, next time a homeowner says we're going to paint the walls and then sell the house, run to your car, give him my card. But if you do that up front, Robert, Robert, I just met you five minutes ago to network and go, hey, if anybody says they want to sell a home, give them my card. Guy's going to go, this guy's an ass. I mean, this yeah. guy's this guy's a taker. He's here yeah, just to, that's right. I don't even want to. And they're going to take your card when they go home. We're going to rip it up. Yeah. But if you met that same guy and that night or in the morning, if I met a painter, probably not going to meet too many painters at a networking event. But if I met a painter at a networking event or in an open house, wherever, wherever and that night or the next morning, I open up an email and I introduce him to a roofer and maybe two days later, a handyman, then maybe three days later, a carpet cleaner. And then maybe I send him a little quick video that I shoot. Hey, Robert, I hope you've been having coffee with those people I sent you. you I gave you some of my cards. The next person you hear say, we're going to paint these walls. We're thinking about selling the home. Give him my card. Dang. But I earned it, Robert. I earned it by helping him build his business first. I, I, I really, really love this approach because I, I just can't stress enough that like leading with value first is so important. Um, and it's the only way to prove that we authentically mean what we, what we say, right? Actions speak louder than words. Yeah. Okay. Everybody understands now there is an inherent truth that oh, how do you know a lawyer or a politician or insert person is lying when their mouth starts moving? Yeah. And, and that is arguably an understandable way to, of why people view um, agents even that way. It's everyone promises them the world. Everyone uses cliche words. I, I have heard so many agents be like, my clients are like family. And I go, prove it. Because I know how I treat my family. And guess what? Right. Here's the truth, by the way. I don't treat my clients like family. I don't want them showing up on my door. I don't go to their birthday parties. Other people do. What I'm saying is, is I'm yeah, honest. I got it. Yeah. And I teach my clients exactly the type of relationship that I want to have with them. I, I always tell my clients, I'm like 007. When you want the absolute best to get something done, you call me. Yeah. And I will get the job done. I don't know the name of your kids. Now, I have partners who make a lot of money who do know the name of your kids. So, guys, if that's you, I'm not saying that's wrong. What I'm saying yep. is, is that the trust has to be mm -hmm. built on the truth. <laughs> like, that's what we have to do. And I yep. love that you – I have the funny point. Remember you saying family and your sister won't take your advice and things like that. What One of the coolest things that happened to me is that um, I got into real estate. started at KW. Sorry, KW. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put you a little bit on blast. And they told me, call your mom and ask for referrals and tell her you're in real estate. And I kid you not, day one. And then they said, we're all in a room with a bunch of new agents. And then they said, oh, yeah, go to different parts of the room. So there's like so many issues personally that I have with this idea. You're in different parts of the room. Go call your mom and your sister and blah, blah, blah. Say, I'm in real estate now. I need referrals, basically, right? Here's the thing that happened because I did listen. I'm, I am I, I am coachable. So I, I called my mom and my mom was like, oh, I'm so proud of you, honey, blah, 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 right? Which I'm like, I almost feel embarrassed because I'm like, mom, I'm trying to work here and you're talking right. to me like I'm a child. I'm not a child. Right. And that's not against a slight against my mom. So here's what happened. My mom never came to me for real estate advice and she didn't really send me anybody. But what I did is that I started to build a massive reputation in real estate. Yep. Mm -hmm. And my mom started to see, guess what? Trusted advisors go, wait a second. This guy knows what he's talking about. And now my mom does come to me for real estate That's advice. It. But it didn't, it didn't come from me. It came from 
trusted advisors who yeah. validated my experience and my skill to where then my mom was like, and I don't, I don't blame her. My mom has changed my diapers. My mom knows when I've, I lied plenty as a kid. My mom knows the darkest side of me. So it's actually reasonable to a degree that she would say, I can't unsee what I've seen. <laughs> you know? Yeah. 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 So Robert, I, I had to take notes because uh, you were, you were hitting me with things that are so sensitive to me. And let me explain. Okay. <clears throat> I want to hit you first. I got two topics. Okay. Asking for referrals and leading with value. <clears throat> Sit down with a hundred mortgage lenders. How do you lead with value? 99 out of a hundred go right to rate. Yeah. To me, if yeah. I'm a mortgage lender leading with value, with, let's use real estate because you're a real estate yeah. coach. Yeah. You build, let's use real estate. If I'm a real estate agent, I show up on time. I'm handsome. I, I've closed all these deals. I've done all this. I've done this. I've done that. And people want to throw up. They don't care about you. <clears throat> Leading with value, Robert, is when I sit down, how I sell myself is I talk to them about their circumstance. Um, uh, I, I, just, I just inherited some money. So, Robert, I know because I'm the best realtor in town that I already have the deal. They're there screening me. No. They're going to hire me. And here's how. So I don't worry about selling myself because I know they're going to hire me when I do this. Uh, you inherited some money. Was there a death? And we're finding out. And, and, and I'll say something to the effect of sorry for your family's loss. Uh, congratulations on inheriting the money. Somebody loved you enough to give you the money. Do you need a financial planner? Do you need a CPA? Mm -hmm. uh, do you need an estate planning attorney? Did they have an estate plan? Oh my God, it went through probate. It took 18 months. Well, you might want to look into getting an estate planning attorney so you don't, families have to go through probate. Yep. <clears throat> Did this money come from life? No, they didn't have life insurance. If you want to meet a life agent, what do you need? And then, and then when we start talking more and more and more and they say, well, I'm looking at that. So I'm going to be honest with you, Mr. Client, because I'm here to help you. We got to paint that wall. And we got to pull this carpet up. And there's some things we're going to need to do to this home before I can sell it. I see some broken boards. I'm going to I'm gonna give you the business card of, of a people who do fencing, people who are going to pull up this carpet, a handyman, a painter. You said you did, that light fixture is broken. We're going to be an electrician in here and fix that. I'm going to hand them all to you so they can all come in and get your house ready to sell. Robert. I just talked for five minutes straight. Did I tell you one time how many years I've been in the business, how many deals I've done? It's irrelevant. Irrelevant. Bringing your network to bear on your client. I could do a deal a year, Robert, but if I introduce a carpet cleaner, electrician, a handyman, a roofer to my client, there's no one can touch me. You introduce your network to your clients and then you introduce your network to your network. So if you know a banker, a financial planner, a CP, an estate planning attorney, introduce them to each other. Facilitate lunches. Build a force field around your business and around your clients. I, I Okay, so this is so good, what you just said. And I, I feel like I ha we have to state it again. We need to, we, we need to emphasize what we're talking about. So I'm going to give a real estate example. I love that, that we, we get to go back and forth with these examples. So I'm going to give a recent example. A client reaches out to me. Now, I have consistent follow-up. She reaches out to me after four years, four years. Now, did she oh, buy a home from you? Tell, tell me about the- She bought a home from me, okay. Um, pregnant at the time and has the home, reaches out to me through text, says, um, I might be needing to sell my house. Okay. Immediately, I, I ask, not, I didn't go, oh my gosh, yes, I can't wait to sell your home. I'm the best agent that's going to sell your home. First of all, she wouldn't be so, contacting me if she didn't. I want, to throw one, I want to throw one mindset thing is you become successful when your mind goes, you're selling your home and in your mind you go, oh my God, I get to find business for carpet cleaners and handyman and roofers. Then you're, so go ahead. I just want to yeah, throw that when yeah, you yeah, think yeah. about how, all these people you get to bring in. Go ahead. Right. So I don't have to say those things because at a very rudimentary basic human logic, I know this. If she didn't already believe those things about me, she would have never contacted me. Correct. So why do I need to be redundant? Yep. 
right? So here's what I did instead. What's going on? Yeah. That's and it. I found out not good stuff. Yep. So now I can actually guess what my brain's doing. Okay. And I won't share sensitive information, but here's what I said. She said, can you meet sometime next week? Now, when someone's having a bad, bad time, time is agonizing. Every second of being stuck in your situation is an eternity. Yep. So you know what I said? I said, listen, we'll call her Becky. Becky, I'm going to move around some meetings and I'm going to meet you for lunch today. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Uh, my lunch break is at this time. Okay. Perfect. I meet her for lunch. Tell me where to meet you. That's right. I go and yeah. meet her. I could see it on her face. Yep. And I go, what's going on? Right? We're not talking. I'm not walking in. Oh, yeah. I just checked your comps. This house is going to sell. Blah, blah, right. blah. She's not actually calling me for that. Yeah. She's saying things are not going the way they should be going. And I need someone to save me. Mm -hmm. And I believe that could be you. Mm -hmm. So then I'm talking to her. About Even though actual, she didn't say that, it's it's that's that's what's perceived and that's kind of what's yes, expressed. Right. Right. <clears throat> and so I'm talking to her about what's actually going on, the actually biggest things that are happening in her life. And it's not the house for everyone listening. Correct. The house is a byproduct. Selling house is a byproduct of a bigger issue or a bigger need. And then I start to connect her. I say, well, listen. This situation you're having right here, I have an attorney. Yep. And I'm going to call him first. I'm going to brief him on what you just discussed with mm -hmm. me. And guess yep. what? It won't cost you a dime. I'm going to get this information for you because I have this, right? And the yep. attorney wants this because guess what? They want the other business. They yep. know that. We have this dynamic. And I do that. And then now she's in on board. But here's the problem. There's a party on the other side. That's also not in a great place. Mm -hmm. conflicting sides. But guess what I do? I go and honor and respect him and seek to bring him value and solve his problems that he's facing right now, which are bigger than the house. Mm -hmm. And now they come together amicably all because I focused on them, yep. their needs and how I could actually meet their that's needs it. and here's my attorney who's going to help you here right here's here's the lender that's going to solve this problem that you're asking in this situation it's unique but i'm going to help you solve it mm -hmm. and that somebody trust is there somebody somebody dies um I, this i've met so many people this has happened to so uh, robert you're in murphy's bro do you have relatives in other states okay so let's use yeah. grandma in idaho i don't know Sure. Let's use it. grandma's in Idaho. <clears throat> Robert, you're the you're the only relative, you, and you inherited the house, and you you're running a business. You live in Murfreesboro. Now you inherit a house in Idaho, and Robert, you go to Idaho. Um, actually, I can't. I got to use this as one of your clients, and not you. One of your clients inherited a home, and I I can't use you because I'm using you in the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. One somebody, clients, somebody. Right? somebody Somebody lives in Murfreesboro. They inherit a home in Idaho. And Robert, they bring you in. And the family members freaking a brick. They got a job in Murfreesboro. They go to the house in Idaho that they just inherited. And grandma was a hoarder. Actually, how that happened. Now, this person's got to get back to their job. They can't be spending five months in Ohio Idaho. So, Robert... The, the excited agent goes, we got a house to sell. And then they see this problem and they go, crap, this is whatever, too much work. The, 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 the agent who's building a referral network says, relax. First thing we're going to do is I know a professional organizer who works with hoarders. They're going to come here. And there's a chance if that person had 30 cats, that they got to bring in a hazmat company. I'll get them. And then we got a hazmat company coming to get all the, the urine out. Mm -hmm. And then we got it when all the urine's out, then we got to bring in uh, the movers. And they're going to get all the stuff out. And then I'm going to bring you somebody who does estate sales 
to help you sell this stuff, or I'm gonna I'm gonna get the company to bring you a giant container, garbage container to throw the garbage right. in. So I'm providing the hazmat, the professional organizer, the the cleanup crew, the moving crew, the garbage, and then God knows how the floors look. We're gonna have to get a carpet cleaner and or carpet uh, carpet salesperson and a painter, and I'm gonna provide you these people, and I'll help you. And and you know if you can't stay here, you could go back to Murfreesboro, and I'll I'll help manage this the best I can, or we'll bring a contractor in, and I'll be in contact with. I'll send you pictures. I'll send you info when the house is ready to go. You fly back out here. That's so that goes to something else that I wrote down in my scribble when you said lead with value. Leading with value is not I have the best rate in town. Right. Uh, you go up to mortgage letter. How do you lead with value? Uh, 6.49%. Oh, let me pull it up. Oh, no, it's 6.48. <sighs> Leading with value is your client Your client uh, is getting married and you introduce them to a photographer, an event planner, a wedding planner, a limo driver, and you help them You help them with ease in their marriage. And it had nothing to do with your oh. business. Yeah. Leading with value is not, well, I've been doing this for 30 years and, and yeah, I'm handsome and I got, a, I got a Mercedes out there. It's It's providing other people to help their life easier. And one of the other things, Robert, I want to throw out there, there's lots of things. I got ADD, so I can control a lot of things in my mind. Uh, when you said uh, that real estate agents uh, are, are very low on the list of trusted advisors, and I'm going to give you the opposite on something. Real estate agents are very, very low. And those of you listening, we're not saying that you're not a trusted person. It's the industry. It's the perception of trust, yeah. Real estate is unbelievably low. And from my experience, mortgage is the opposite. Mortgage is almost the most trusted. From my experience, Robert, one of the reasons is because Brian Buffini, mm -hmm. Mike and Tom Ferry, Ricky Carruth, and all these other guys out there know less than zero about networking. They teach cold call, door knock, flyers, door knock, sell to everybody you meet, talk to your sphere, talk to your friends and family members, and sell, sell, sell. Uh, sell till they buy or die. If they're within puke range, puke your business on them. Um, so it's the, the, the ways real estate people are taught to get business is kind of shady sometimes. Yeah. yeah. And those TV shows, the Property Brothers and all these other people, driving the Mercedes Benzes and the Rolls Royces and these guys kind of you're selling a home. Yeah. You didn't cure cancer. You didn't cure world peace. Yep. You didn't cure world hunger. Yeah. You, you, you're selling a home. Yeah. So, but some people for whatever reason have let the marketing and the fame and glory or whatever it is get to their head and they show up five minutes late, talk down to people they should do business with me because I got a because I got a Rolls Royce. No, that's just and that's one and sh the showing up late and the kind of the flaky and then like you said, <clears throat> Hannah, uh, I just inherited some money. All right, let's get you in a home. That's the last thing you should be saying. You're oh, selling your home. Can I ask you why? What's the circumstance? Yes. Because Robert, if the circumstance is my husband got a new job, we're moving to Texas, Robert. I know Robert because even KW and who you're with, all these, a lot of these EXPs, they got big networks. You start getting on the phone, you call an agent in Texas. You hook this up, person up with an agent in Texas. We still haven't talked about how much money we're going to make. Yeah. You start hooking them up with other people to help them. That's, That's how right. you lead with value. Exactly. I'm getting all sweaty now. I'm getting excited. All right. So, <laughs> so we're nearing because you and I are doing two segments. Guys, if you're listening, um, Rick is going to do a next, another segment with me when we, uh, where we will go and I'm going to challenge Rick and I'm excited for him to meet this challenge where I'm going to look him in the face and I'm going to say, Rick, if you had a hundred days to make a hundred K in real estate, what would you do day one? Go. That's the next segment coming up. So I'm going to wrap this segment with a question that, and I want you to walk me through this agents listening right now who have not done what you do. So in other words, not agents who are going to turn around and they're like, yep, I, I mostly do what Rick says or I do a variation of it, okay? Let's talk about agents who are like, I want to do what you want to, to, uh, mm -hmm. to what you're saying, Rick. I want to yep. do these things. We're going to do two things for them right here. 
we're going to end it after we do the first thing. We're going to end it with you sharing a little bit about your program because I want mm -hmm. them to have a resource. I want to connect them to mm -hmm. a trusted advisor on this, a.k.a. you. So we're going to let you do that. But yep. first, look at me. I am Robert. I am a new agent. I've only done four deals. I want to do this referral network. What can I do right now <clears throat> to go do this today? So in other words, like I love to give someone an actionable thing to go do right away. They watch the video and then they're paralyzed and they don't know what to do and where do I start? I'd love to get one thing for them to go out and start this journey today, immediately. And, and this answer has nothing to do with something that I could teach them. It's something they could just go do. Right. We're going to go into the coaching program. We're going to go into uh, the course that you have. We're going to go into those. Yep. So we already know that's coming. So what can we give them to walk away leading with value today to go do something meaningful along this path of power partners? And they don't do any networking. No, they're brand new. Because again, I, I would argue Beautiful. that even some of the senior agents don't do a lot of networking either. They've just yep. built up a repertoire business that they sphere of influence, right? That's the way it's been taught for a long time. Okay. So uh, number one is go on the internet and do research on a real estate agent elevator pitch. You, ha you can't network without an elevator pitch. Okay. So create something, who you are, what you do, you, you have to have something. And then if, unless you live in a really remote rural area, everywhere has a chamber of commerce. Go on the chamber of commerce website, go to the calendar and find ribbon cuttings, which is where a new business opens. The chamber of commerce goes there and congratulates them. Find out where the lunch and learns are and find out where the networking events are. Get off the seat, get in your car, get out and shake some hands that 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 alone there's about four hours of the whole system i teach to do that right but you gotta get out you gotta meet people you gotta shake hands and you gotta start telling people what you do is the first step there's a million other steps but you gotta get out there and you gotta show your face and robert honestly i really believe that agents in the beginning should absolutely just take a stack of cards and walk up and down the street and door knock because you have got to build a tough skin and you got to build armadillo skin and you got to be able to help accept rejection. It yeah. should not be your life's goal. So get out. If you want to meet power partners, the, the number easiest way, go to freaking chamber of commerce events. It's five bucks where I live to walk in the door. There'll be 30 to a hundred people in the room. The other thing is every single city where I live in the East Bay of California, every week, 50 to 150 real estate agents meet at the local marketing meeting and talk about all their listings. Hmm. So you get to sit in a room with 50 to a hundred other real estate agents, home inspectors, mortgage lenders, and just get in the environment and get around other people and listen in on conversations. Learn the industry. My wife's done 1,030-ish closed transactions. It's called transactional experience. If you've only closed four or five deals. One other thing, Robert, you ask for one, I'm giving you 10. One other thing is the most successful agent you've ever met. The more successful they are from what I've seen, the more willing they are to give you advice. Go up to somebody and go, I I'm struggling. Be honest. I'm struggling. I need help. Could I buy you lunch? And in the time you're eating lunch, could I ask you some real estate questions? I've never been turned down, ever. I've had people go, no, I'll mentor you because you had the guts to ask. Yeah. I had a guy mentor me for three years. I had to buy him lunch every other Friday. I don't think anybody ever told me no either, honestly. Yeah, now, that, now that I think they about won't. it, talking. Yeah. Who's going to tell you no is the, is the, is the unsuccessful person. If there's, a, if there's seven figure earners in your city, Murfreesboro, Maybe ask one in that city or go one city over, find the I most think successful I've ever person. An agent down either. That, because they, they, if, if they, if, Robert, if, if somebody said, for them to come out and ask for help directly. Oh, it, it, I'm Robert, I'm struggling. Could, I, I, I need some help. I, I have some questions. Could I buy you lunch and ask you questions until you're done eating? I won't take any more time than that. You're going to have lunch anyway. I'll buy you lunch. Could you answer questions so you're done eating? I've had people 
jaws hit the floor. You got the, I'm sorry for saying, you got the balls to ask that question. The person you're asking for them to turn you down, they're, they're not, they're not a seven figure earner. <laughs> yeah. They didn't get there by, by do, by okay, when so somebody let's... comes to them, I need help and turn them down. Let's so, recap real quick. Them. So then step one is understand what you bring to the table. What is your pitch? What is your value proposition? Which Absolutely. I established with the agents as well. Like, why should I use you or why should I partner with you? That's a basic question that anybody should be able to answer, right? Yeah. Okay. Step two is actually get out there and network then. Yes. Go to your chamber of commerce, get their events, go to their website, whatever you can do, because you're going to have a slew of different professionals who very likely a handful of them are going to be ones that serve the clients that you want to serve, but they don't do what you do, mm -hmm. right? And, and network with those people. If you're someone who is struggling with uh, fear of rejection, because some people can handle it, some can't, you got to go, you got to go discipline yourself out of that. And, yep. and so go door knock. Um, yep. I actually know an agent who went and found a partner. They were both scared to death, but they both yep. needed to do it. So they went together. Take it a step further. I found an agent who went and found a lender who said, listen, I want the business and I want an agent who is willing to work for it. I'll go with you to yep. door knock because I'm not afraid yep. of rejection and I want to work with agents who are willing to grow. Yep. And then um, and then, kind of wrapping, wrapping it up then is that then start to provide value. Start By to find ways that you're talking to your network, your network. I'm talking to the lawyer. I'm talking to the insurance guy. Less about me and more about what are you looking for? What are you wanting? What are your needs? Yep. And and start to fulfill those needs and you'll start to build that network, that trust, yep. but also that confidence that you yourself are actually valuable yep. because you've proven it. Yeah, and ev and every piece of what very 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 impressed with your with your recall. Um every component of that has scripting and uh tactics so Absolutely. there's a saying when you have when you put in wing it effort you have wing it results so everything the door knocking the elevator pitch the networking events the coffee meetings everything has a complete script built in so people sometimes are nervous about just nervous about door knocking because they don't have the script down mm -hmm. so there's role play so each one of those components you read back is you know one to three or four hours of building systems, right? Yeah, yeah. But you're not spending five thousand a month on leads. You're just sitting writing scripts. Absolutely. Yeah, so, <laughs> so, and and um, I'm a big purveyor of that. And, and um, so I actually have um, a a uh, I have Microsoft OneNote. You're welcome, Microsoft. And yep. in there, I have an unbelievable amount of notebooks and pages in those notebooks. And basically, what I do is every time I send something to answer someone or to tell someone something. If I ever think I'm going to say it again, oh, yeah. I copy it and I paste it in there. And 100%. then as it starts to be used, I refine it and I update it, but we'll get off track there. So everybody listening, we just gave you something that you can go do today mm -hmm. that is um, borderline free. And, and honestly, a lot of chamber of commerces, you can just go to their calendar and show up and there is no cost. So yeah. you can go do this today. But if some of you are like me, who would like a little bit of hand holding, a little bit of insight, a little bit of knowledge, because you want to be more fast, you want to be faster, more efficient, more effective. You want the scripts, you want the strategy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to connect you. This is my virtual connection to you for a trusted advisor that is going to make it 10 times easier on you through the process. So now, Rick, how can you, how can agents connect with you who want a trusted advisor like you in their life for this particular power uh, partners? Yeah. So um, let me just set a little foundation here. So it's August 21st, last week, Wednesday, exactly a week ago today, I started teaching this 21 years ago. Oh, I've, I've, great time. I've facilitated around 1,500. So people, those of you watching, if you've been to BNI or La Tip or anything, I facilitated my own networking groups 
about 14 or 1500 meetings. I've had about 7,200 coffee meetings. I've studied networking and taught it for 21 years. 13 years ago, I met my wife. She helps people invest in land, sold about 1,030 parcels. In, in 2008, Robert, at the real estate crash, I got divorced in February 12, 2008. My house went down. I became homeless. My ex-wife got the house. I moved into my office. I slept on a futon and I showered at the gym. And now my wife hates when I talk. We're, we're here talking about money. So I talk about money. I'm in the money business. Yeah. I, I'm worth between seven and 10 million. And, and in 10 years, it'll be about just, if I didn't do anything else, it'll be in 10 years, it'll be about 45 million with my land holdings. But I was homeless 14 years ago. Yeah. And we did 67 deals last year, made $865,000 working 15 hours a week. And that's, that's, that's just from the land. I want to lay that out saying, I didn't read this in a book. I didn't work at Hertz rent a car six months ago, been teaching this for 21 years. Right. Okay. So I have three words for you. One referral away. YouTube is one referral away. My email is Rick at one referral away. I have a course at www.onereferralaway.com. It's, it's about eight to 10 hours of me speaking to slides, teaching everything about the foundation networking. It's about, again, six to eight hours long. It comes with two hours of one-on-one -on -one coaching and it's only 795 bucks. So online course, two hours of one-on-one -on -one coaching, 795 bucks. The only other thing I have, Robert, is coaching packages Six hour package is 995 bucks. And what I do in there is I help people, not only do I show them what a network, I, I help them come up with a list of power partners, where to find them, how to contact them, the scripting, the exact email. We're gonna write it together, the email scripting. I like that. And then we're gonna take the epiphany and we're gonna turn it into slides so they have something they can do at coffee meetings. Okay, it's that. a lot. What, what we just did in an hour and 10 minutes is, is a snowflake on top of the iceberg. Oh, I know. I know. It really is. It, yeah. I'm in my head already. I'm like, uh, Rick, I'm going to have to bring you in to, to do a, a meeting with my downline. Anytime. We, we just hit 103 agents yesterday. Awesome. Yeah. In three months. And, and Robert, what I ask for, for, for anybody that is ever looking to bring me to do any form of speaking, networking is is one of the most misunderstood things I've ever seen in my life. So I'm I'm asking you for a favor that it that's like it's like really okay broker sometime. But we have the brokers meeting. I want you to I want you to speak to my my entire team of 160 agents for 20 minutes. Nope, no, because it's doing you a disservice, and it's not enough time for me to even explain what networking is, especially yeah. if they have. Brian Buffini or Mike and Tom Ferry itis, where they really have no clue. I got to like detox their mind of cold calling the Ricky Kruth stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, if you're going to have me talk to your team or any broker out there, 45 minutes to an hour, I prefer 90 minutes to two hours, to be honest with you. Yeah. Okay. And, and I always say, well, people go, I don't have that kind of time. Well, well then here's my standard line, Robert. I'm offering you multi millions of dollars worth of training for 90 minutes to two hours for free. And you say you don't have the time. My response is wealth isn't for everyone. Wealth might not be for you. You can't yeah. give me 90 minutes to two hours to learn this. <laughs> go cold call. Yeah. Go find, go find something that fits in the time frame. Yep. And, and there's or, nothing or wrong with that too, yeah. but no. this is what you want to do. This is what he's saying. He needs yes. an investment from you for his investment. Yep. I love it. All right. So one referral away. One referral away. That is the best way, it seems like, for someone to connect with you further. Yeah, if they want to email me, it's rick at onereferralaway.com or the website's onereferralaway.com. It's Perfect. pretty simple. Rick, this was awesome. Um, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm really glad um, that we, we Wait for the, the next hour. Yeah, and so now uh, uh, if we need to, we can do a bathroom break. <laughs> uh, Let, let's. Do you want to tie this one in a bow before we do, or do you want to – close this out and say what's coming up. Uh, so I already said it in the previous one okay. and it's, these won't be, these won't be sent back to back either. It's not going to be a two hour segment. Sure. It's going to be one segment about your 
one referral away and what you do and your strategy. And then there'll be a separate segment because it's part of its own thing, which is the 100K in 100 days. That's a whole okay. series that I do where I bring in amazing okay. top individuals. And because it's cool. such a fun thing to do, man. It's so cool to just have these really great leaders say, this is what yep. I would do.